Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It is Local Chat, episode 153. I'm your host, Will Crosby. Joining me this week is one Chris from Save Data. Help. They kept they captured me again. And helping me capture him is Ian Gibson. Hello, I'm back. I may have been gone for a bit, but it's that time of year. He has risen and I have returned. <laughs> oh. Do you think shut the five one shut up? Do you think, do you believe he has risen is a Christmas thing, you motherfucker? I'm, I'm slightly insulted that you think I'm that dumb. That is a very <laughs> Carefully crafted bit. How dare you dissect that joke? I don't know. I, I don't. You. I don't know your history. <laughs> I try I to know as much as possible. I don't know you. <laughs> no, Christmas is when Jesus came out of the Easter egg, punched his way out like that Jurassic Park scene. With yeah, the he came out thick. He came out of that vagina show. like Shrek. Took him three days. <laughs> so I'm funny. <laughs> 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 Oh, God. Oh, 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 God. Um, folks, we're here to talk about video games and all sorts of things. First, we got to chit chat about our lives. And, you know, through him, all things are possible. Uh, no. Ian. <laughs> Ian. Uh, we do it for him. Hi. We do it for him. Uh, Gotta be one of those local chats again. <laughs> Ian, uh, you've written here Ian's update. And I'm terrified by what oh, the fuck. Uh, well. Look, I'm taking on a little story. Uh, two weeks ago, uh -oh. it was... Uh, no, actually, it was last week. It was the Tuesday before Christmas. It's about 11.30 in the morning. I'm sitting at home working, and my front office uh, looks over the front yard. And I had the blinds partially up, and I notice two pairs of feet walking across my yard to the front door. And it got me worried, because oh, no. if it's a delivery, deliveries come all the time. It's just one person, right? So why are there two people walking to my door? And they ring the doorbell. And I'm like, okay. So I, I get up and I answer the door and it's it's an old white lady and like a middle-aged black lady. And the old white lady looks at me and she goes, oh, you must be Ian. And I said, oh, no. <laughs> and I said, yes, hi. And she We're goes, here to beat you up. <laughs> We're friends with Maggie. We've actually been writing letters back and forth with Maggie. And then I noticed she had a Bible in her hand. No. And it's another fucking targeted attack by Jehovah's Witnesses. Weekday morning, they came specifically to my house and they know me by name and face now and i had to stand at that door for 15 minutes and just be like uh-huh uh-huh and they're like have you do you know today's verses and then they said the verses to me and they're like well maybe we can sit down with you and maggie sometime and read the bible together and i'm like let me talk with maggie about that <laughs> and it took about 10 minutes it, it, just a long running if you're not catching up basically during covid jehovah's witness couldn't come to your door because of covid yes. restrictions at least in maryland so they were writing letters maggie decided to write back to the letters saying politely no thank you but they took that as an opportunity to put us on the list yes and that, that was, was a mistake in, we've been over this absolutely that was in baltimore they have now tracked us down to our new address in florida somehow and they have specifically come to our door before but this is the worst because they basically just they know our names and immediately as soon as we open the door instead of saying hi how are you it's just immediately you must be ian and we're fine. you I, you you we're must fine. be ian <laughs> I, I don't I've Your been thinking about this precedes you. I think this is literally going to last forever like they tracked us from Baltimore to Florida I think this is just going to be with us for the rest of our lives now I wasn't aware this problem had followed you to Florida I remember the letters bit um, can I <laughs> offer you a solution now that you live in Florida a Florida based solution yeah get a gun <laughs> And shoot both. Of I have them. two guns. I have two guns. No, 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 no. I don't I, think I can do I, that. I need you to adopt a persona. I need you to put on a MAGA hat. I need you to walk to the door in sweatpants, oh, flip flops, don't care, buddy. Uh, tank top tucked in, and then just gun hanging out by your dick. Just hanging out of my. You know, yeah, what? yeah, my yeah. yeah. Shorts. In, in view, in view. You don't have to hold it, and then just be like, mm, we don't like trespassers around here. I, I was thinking, you need to dress. Like the stereotypical thing, white Republican people are Christian Republicans are Ooh, scared play of. Play rap music at them. You should play rap music. You should speak, learn some phrases in Arabic, 
and like whisper them before I, you open the door. That's not like going, all. It's not. I don't think you guys. I I had a Must semester. Allah, in college. <laughs> I had a semester in college where I was roommates with the Jehovah's Witness. That shit will not scare them at all. So oh. like I was thinking about that, and I'm like I'm. I'm on their fucking list forever. Even if I ask him to take take me off their list, I'm on it forever. Do a blood transfusion sucks. in front of him. Is that offensive? <laughs> <laughs> I think can, it is. Can you be naked? <laughs> celebrate if you're still in your property. Christmas. Have, uh, have a birthday yeah. near them. Pee on them. I mean, we had the Christmas tree up, so I I I genuinely think I'm just this is a problem I'm gonna have for the rest of my life now. It's targeted harassment by Jehovah's Witness. It's wild. Anyways, that's my update. Can you dig, dig a moat? <laughs> <laughs> like it's my Put property. Some gators in it. <laughs> yeah, HOA you're is, Florida. Embrace it. My HOA is real weak, <laughs> so yeah, I can do whatever. I, I can want. take them. They're old. I can do it. I can yeah, do it. You just gotta wait them out. Like what? Five months. <laughs> they don't. Actually, they they don't even have the power to fine. Like they don't have the power to fine people as part of the HOA. And they recently tried to sneakily pass something, an amendment that would allow them to fine. And they sent out a letter just being like, hey, we want to pass this amendment. It's just like to do something and that's it. And like the, <laughs> immediately people were like, I looked this up. It allows them to fine us. Vote no. And it, they just immediately voted it down. Something similar so, like that happened in my mom's HOA when, we, when I was like, like I was off in college and she moved into an annoying ass fucking uh, little like sub community. Um, and mm -hmm. they tried to pass some bullshit that let them like have more control and so the next thing that happened is somebody vote like put up a vote to dissolve the hoa and then immediately <laughs> dissolved and they never got it back <laughs> beautiful that's beautiful yeah it's it's like it, it, they're they're there all they do is organize the facebook page and two events a year and they have no power to do anything else and it's that's fantastic. what an hoa fucking should be yeah, yeah. and it's it's $120 a year, which is fantastic because in Florida, most neighborhoods are paying $120 per a month, month yeah. to their wow. HOA or more. But in, but in, it's, most, it's in most HOAs in Florida uh, exist to exclude black people. Yeah. No, actually, the, the new racism <laughs> is renters. I, I got this from my sister in her <laughs> HOA. The new thing, it's it's renters. Yo, we don't want new, new racism renters just dropped. <laughs> it's renters. It's We're all about anti-renters now. <laughs> anyway, that's that's the title of this local chat: patching in the new racism. <laughs> new racism. Hey, we came up with a new slur in our David and I in our psycho not stream. No. So. <laughs> Oh God! Oh so, God! Don't say it. Those, you, know, you know those little, those little Christmas gnomes you see everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the gnomes, and then you can't see their eyes because they have the big hats on. Apparently, those are called gonks and not gnomes. <laughs> to which I said, "You can't say that. You There's no way you're that. allowed to say that." Oh, that's my favorite oh. joke around my parents is when they say like a word, and it won't even be something. It'll be like it's not this word, but it'll be something harmless like hummus. Like like something they don't uh -huh. say normally, but or like bulgogi. Those are the guys fighting Israel. Uh, yeah, or like bulgogi, <laughs> or like or um or like shawarma, like stuff yeah. that because foods around. And I always go, you cannot you can't say, say that, that. ma. Can't like say you that. Can't. And they like give it a half. It's twenty twenty three. It's like you can't say that bulgogi. Come on, what what year is it? <laughs> um. <laughs> Oh, oh boy! Now, now I just want Korean beef. Get, give it to me, please. Oh, yeah. Sweet Korean yeah. beef. Korean Sweet barbecue. Korean beef. Oh, oh, bar food. Yeah, yeah. I, I would love food. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, moving on. How was everyone's holidays? Good holidays. Good Christmases. Good. good. You guys get what was your what was your your you guys get anything really good surprising that you're in love with, etc. Uh, two things. One, I got a pair of sneakers, which Will Crosby's gonna see probably tomorrow. Um, Vic got them for me. They're super cool. Um, and then the other thing, which is uh, possibly exciting to Ian, definitely exciting to Will, is this the Root yeah. RPG Ooh. core book. I also got the that first expansion exciting. and the dice. They're not here yet. Um, but uh, yeah, this thing is fucking sweet. Um, I really like Root, and this is uh, powered by the Apocalypse. This is based. This D it's a D and D knockoff. From the folks at home uh based on the pbta powered by the apocalypse system which consists of rolling gotcha. just two d6s as opposed to d20 and a bunch of other bullshit um it's like streamed down i don't like a lot of pbta because a lot of them are way too simple um this hits that sweet spot of there is enough going on my cat hates it uh <laughs> pussy behind you <laughs> yeah 
but also yeah very <laughs> very, very very excited to play this yeah that's cool I've, I've heard good things about that also like a, like a one shot takes two to four hours according to the back of it oh, and i'm like gorgeous that's that's what god intended hell yeah god bless um ian what what, what, anything, what anything good you got i did i got two things not that i only got two things but there were two things that kind of so the first one was something that Maggie got in like a white elephant Shavanda gift Christmas party where like people bring like bad gifts and it gets passed around and you end up with one of them. Yes. So she brought it home and she gave it to me and she was like, you'll probably use this more. <laughs> it's it's one of those plug in sit on top of your desk mug warmer pads. Oh, yeah. My, my coworker has them. They're great. Yeah. And you always see them and you're just like, OK, that can't work as well as this. It's got to be stupid. And I've been using it and even though this looks really cheap, you set in the Celsius temperature, it hits that in like two minutes and it just holds it as long as there's a mug on it. And it actually works fantastic. Like I have it set at 70 degrees Celsius, just sits there with my coffee all day and it never goes cold. And it's it's weird. You guys ever have one of those gifts that you get and you're like, this is going to be stupid bad, yes. but it ends up being fantastic. Yeah, yes. I got one of those years ago. We got one of those like luggage weigher things. And I was like, when am I ever oh, going to yeah, use this? Great. And then, of course, this last trip, I couldn't find it. But previous trips, it's been like, yeah. oh, I, now I don't have to stand on a scale and subtract my fat, large weight from <laughs> this bag and, and pretend yeah. it's not over 50 pounds. See, yeah. I've, I've, I've just always gone, eh, it's under the weight. And then multiple <laughs> times I've gotten to the airport and been fucked. <laughs> <laughs> so the other thing I got, um, we, we've talked about this before. Do you... Do you have people complain about getting you Christmas gifts and or complaining about deciding what they want for Christmas as adults? Um, yeah, I, I have never been told that I'm like really hard to shop for. I've had mm -hmm. some people say like, oh, I don't know what to get you. But usually they, they figure it out and it's like, yeah, that's a very easy gift for me. Get me yeah. a video game thing. Get me a like fucking fit like like my mom complained before and then just got me like a criterion collection bundle i was like yeah that's perfect that's such an easy <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah exactly so like i my family complains about it a lot and they complain about both sides they complain about i don't know what to get you and i don't know what to ask for for christmas and for me it's easy right christmas is for the things that you don't need to spend money on because it's a stupid purchase but at the same time you would love to have right mm -hmm. um and so the thing that I put on my list about two months ago is an electric guitar. Oh, so shit. I got, oh my I got God. an electric guitar and now I'm learning to play guitar. You the question is such speed. There we go. It's oh, no. this, this fucking like thing was $110 on Amazon. Yeah. God bless China. I it's know. fantastic. It's incredible. <laughs> um, so now the question is how long will I go before I give up on it? But even if I about gave up hours. on it, it was a gift. I forgot how fucking hard it is to learn guitar. I tried in high school. It's I enough. just don't have a musical bone in my fucking body. I, I, like a lot of people, bought a guitar once, learned some basic chord progression, learned like three songs. It was like, I'm done with this. Yeah, that's probably where I'll get. But I'm still going to have a shitload of fun with it. So that was like the perfect Christmas gift where if I bought that for myself, it would be an absolute waste of money because I wouldn't go through with it and I would end up dropping it at some point. But if it's just going to be gifted to me for free, it's like, fuck yeah, I'll try this for a while and see how it goes. We live perfect in an age gift. where you can get like niche or new board games on Amazon really easily. And like Vic and I have been getting into a lot of board games recently, partially thanks to Will Crosby and Karen. Um, so like it's just be like, hey, here's a link. Get us this board game. Goodbye. Yeah. Here's three other options. See you at Christmas. Yeah, it's perfect. What about you, Will? What'd you get? Uh, I didn't really get anything crazy. <clears throat> um, I did get a on my list, which I was actually meaning to take off and I forgot to, but a desk mat uh, that is Star Trek The Next Generation. So it's just got like all the computer design on it and everything. And I, I'm not sure where I'm going to put it yet. I, I put it on my workbench for right now. You can just, you can but, just swap um, it out every every, that's what every I was month thinking. with your Roller Coaster Tycoon one. Yeah, because I, I also have the Dwarf Fortress one. So I was like, probably oh, keep I'll just... them all around a lot longer. And it keeps yeah. the desk cleaner because you have to move it off. Yeah. You so bought I think the if... Dwarf Fortress and the Roller Coaster Tycoon one? Yeah. <laughs> all right, now that's crazy. You, you could Frankenstein them all together. <laughs> Like some kind yeah, of abomination. Make a big quilt. I also have the Deep Rock Galactic one from the board game, but uh, I put that on Karen's desk because she wanted it. So that so thing one day certainly will play it one day. Certainly someday. Um, 
I honestly thought about texting you about it, and then I thought better of it. <laughs> I was like, I don't feel like learning it. Um, yeah, that's about it. And then I got uh, just some books. I got a Napoleon uh, book about the Napoleonic Wars and some other stuff. Oh, actually, my mom always does the thing where she buys like stuff at Christmas tree shop, and it's usually like hit or miss. But this year, she gave Karen a, a candle warmer, which I guess she had done the previous year, and Karen threw it away. So, But you just reminded me, I think I could probably use that candle warmer as a mug warmer for my coffee. Um, yeah. I mean, if I'll it just, gets to like 70 C, then you're good to go. Yeah, I'll have to see what is it's that the, Is that at. the temperature of coffee, though? That seems crazy high. Well, I don't, so, I don't so, know anything. So I put it at 70 C because 70 C is around 165 Celsius, which is the temperature at which like Fahrenheit. the taste of milk Fahrenheit. changes. Yeah, yeah, 165 Fahrenheit. So like I'm, most of the time I drink lattes and you don't want the milk to go over 165 because then it it starts Stalls, to spoil burns. a bit. Yeah, yeah, it burns. So so I keep it at 70. I, honestly, I mean, when the coffee comes out, it's at like probably 95 because it's supposed to be right below boiling. Hmm. But you don't want to drink it at that. No, it's too hot. Yeah. My little bit, my little baby mouth. Um, but the other thing she got me is uh, this magnetic. I, w- I could grab it, but I'm not going to. Magnetic light thing, so it like magnets, and then it, the light like clicks out, Ooh. and it's like a long, oh, oh, yeah. elongated just light. Saw that thing. And then the time. very tip of it has a like just a super bright yes. LED uh, going out. Oh yeah. So like you could really. That was uh, great. Look at some stuff. So that I was pretty excited about. But you could really look at some stuff. Other than that, nice. finally. Uh, oh, I will say I did get my nephew's Stretch Armstrongs for uh, Christmas. Nice. Which was awesome. They have they have many now, and I got one a Scooby-Doo and the other one Boba Fett, and they were ex- having a great time stretching them. And I was like, those are going to break, awesome. and then they don't. And you're like, yeah. So, Hell yeah. Stretch Speaking Armstrong's of Christmas, cool. um, give us your uh, Me, You, Mini Plus vacation update. Wow, you broke the code. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, my Mio Mini Plus, I took on vacation. Uh, it's fantastic and I love it. And it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. I'll hold it up here. Uh, what, 60 bucks from AliExpress? I actually got this from Amazon for oh, I think 75. I um, runs on Onion OS. My favorite uh-huh. thing I think about it is, um, how quickly you can get back into the game. Like, if oh, I'm yeah. playing a game and I turn it off, it just yeah. turns off, and when I turn it back on, it just goes right back to the game I'm playing. Plus, yep. this has yep. the game switcher, so I can just go to any previous game, 20 games I've played, uh, mm-hmm. no matter how far back. And then, and you can delete them from here, so it does the most recent. Um, it's fantastic and awesome. I played um, Brave Fencer Musashi briefly, and mm-hmm. that was really good. Uh, that's a PlayStation 1 game. And then... Uh, I'll talk about it when I get there, but the Minish Cap, uh, I've been playing a bunch of, uh, and it's just mm-hmm. great. Uh, I think the selection of games on here is fantastic. It would be great if it played N64, but since there's no analog stick, it would be a little hard with PlayStation. There yeah. are PlayStation games that don't mm-hmm. use the analog sticks. Um, yeah. A lot of them. So those, those work pretty well. Um, but outside that was, of that, that was like the main that was other than price that was the main reason why i didn't go with the miu mini plus was because i need i need my analog sticks so i have the ann bernick uh rg uh 35x which is yeah. identical to the thing will crosby just held up um and does the, all the exact same things and runs in the same os um so uh that one is great it appears to be identical to what will has there's also one from that same company ann bernick that has the one stick for your um yeah, your N64 uses and one that has two sticks, you can do like PS2 and shit. So yeah. I'm 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 scum. So, Chris, what I have is I have the R36S. That's the one I'm thinking of. This is this was forty dollars shipped after taxes, etc. from AliExpress. But the yeah. reason why is basically this company releases a knockoff of Ann Bernick and Miu Mini for oh, like two not months. Anbernick. No, it's not. It's a knockoff, but it's the same chip and everything. They release it, and then like two months later, they get copyright struck, and they just change the plan slightly and release a new version. So every like, two months, there's like a copy copycat coming out. And like, hey, look, I get it. That's great and all, but also like, what Envernick and uh, MM Plus are doing is also crime. So like, like, yeah, like, and like it's all open source, <laughs> anyways. Like, so. yeah, like yes, what they're doing is technically legal, but we all know what the purpose of that device actually is. Oh, shut buddy. up. 
I don't know if yours came like this, but mine came loaded with games, which yes. is yeah. illegal. Mine did, mine, too. <laughs> my, mine did too, which is legal. But I'm assuming we'll yeah. same thing either where it's like they tell you you should actually go get garlic or onion. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And make it better because the default OS is shit. I bought a new oh, SD guys, card, too. Same. Did you ha- did you it didn't come loaded with garlic OS? No, it's a, it's a separate program yeah it comes with its own proprietary that's dog shit um, oh, okay okay and like you literally mine... go to a a reddit with a bat file and it just does it all for you and do and that yeah yeah go. yeah because mine came with arc os which is it's 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 another branch that garlic os came off of uh, honestly that's my number one thing about this like you're talking about the quick resume and stuff i have the retroid pocket flip and that thing I don't play it because it's an Android based device and because it's Android, it's fucking difficult getting all the apps running properly. You're constantly having to touch the screen. The apps use different shortcuts. Yeah. But having like Arc OS, Garlic OS, like a dedicated OS for the handheld makes it so much quicker and easier. And it's it's great. I got I got a vacation this weekend, so I'm going to take mine and play some and and see what it's like. I did play Gordian the Monster Moon on this because it's Pico 8. That was fine. So hell yeah. I mean, we're. We're all there. Y- y'all, yeah. if you if you guys ever have 40 to 60 bucks free, go buy one of these fucking devices. They're fantastic. And like I, I bought a, a, a hundred or maybe it was a 200 gig uh, micro SD card. It cost me 19 or nine dollars. I mean, like yeah. non-existent yeah. amount of money. And guess what? I have every game that was ever invented from the onset of video games to the when the PS1 required sticks. Um, yeah. on that thing and it's not even halfway full <laughs> yeah it's fantastic it's it's wild um uh, it's very cool and yes um totally worth it it comes with a cute case too uh, and honestly I, the I most impressive it. thing to me is the fucking the ips screen is so fucking good screen, yeah it's good great. it's so good for me it's the buttons man they just feel so fucking good they got that, that good click to them yeah. The, um yeah those screens are great i think i need to look it up but i think they're the same ones i modded into my other game boys oh really um, that's funny because they they're probably around that price point um, my uh my, my boss has a very nice uh work camera it's a uh, ronin 4d um and people all the time should ask him what the fuck is that thing it looks very cool uh that's we have a joke now where, like my amber has become that where if i'm ever on the train i'll just play it and people go what the fuck is that thing all the time yeah <laughs> Yep, it's, it's great. great. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yep, that's the Mio Mini Plus uh, vacation test. Uh, it's fantastic, and I love it. And I already want to buy more handhelds. They're they're coming out with like a S uh, Game Boy SP version of the Mio Mini mm. Plus, and I think uh-huh. I'm gonna have to get that because that sounds awesome. There were some uh, leaks on that. Uh, anyways, let's head out of Chit Chat Station and pull into. Games you've been playing this week, uh, Ian Gibson, you are champing at the bit uh, for this uh, segment here. You've filled out more words than I've ever seen. In yeah, my I, I opened this. I was like, "What the fuck's going on here?" Yeah. yeah. Um, well, folks, it's been fucking goaty catch up for me because there's uh, I, I I take goaty very seriously. Game of the year discussions, where my number one fear is that I play a game the day after goaty discussions. And it turns out that was my game of the year Mm. and I just played it too late and I missed it. Or somebody comes along and they're like, why didn't you play this game? And and I'm like, fuck, we completely missed that game. So at least for me, I try and touch or at least give a good glance at a majority of the games that come out in the year. Like not literally majority of the games, but anything that people are talking about, they say could be good, could be in the top 10, whatever. Mm -hmm. So anyways, there were six games in particular that I try to catch up on. Um, I'll go through them pretty quickly. There's only a couple that are actually worth talking about. Uh, Viewfinder. It's the puzzle game. Um, With the camera. I got to be honest with you. I wasn't that impressed with that game. I think maybe I'm just done with that style of indie puzzle game because like you saw the first trailer for that game, you knew what it was, and then you play the game. That's exactly what it is. It's not really impressing you. It gave the gimmick away. It doesn't mean that it's a bad game. It's just those aren't as surprising or hitting as much as they were a couple of years ago. I don't know. Did you guys play Viewfinder? Uh, we they played it on stream, and I watched the stream, and I was like, "That's enough of that." It's it's a yet exactly. another uh, indie perspective based uh, puzzle simulator. Yeah. That that's not to say it's not good. It's probably the best of those. Um, but also like, eh, it's fine. 
Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So then the next one I played was, yeah, you want those games, right? So here you go. Now let's see you clear them, which uh, we were talking about off forever with the title <laughs> of this game. <laughs> we were talking about this a little bit before stream, but basically all those mobile ads that show those little games like pull the pin or run across, get the numbers, you know, figure out how to get the cars out of the parking lot or whatever. This is a Steam game. I think it's either 10 or 15 bucks. And they're just like, hey, what if we instead of mobile games which tease you with that gameplay and then just are filled with ads and microtransactions what if we actually made those games and just bundled them together and gave them to you so you play this it has five or six of those types of games they're actually those games so there's the gameplay mechanics and elements and stuff and there's anywhere between 20 to 40 levels of each of them um and it's pretty cool i would recommend getting it on sale because e there's some of the games i don't enjoy but there's some of the games where i played like half or more of the stages because i was like oh i like this little puzzle mechanic so i'm going to keep going and keep going and it's pretty cool but it's it's a little bit of expectations versus reality where you see those mobile ads and you go oh i want to play this game because it looks like this yeah and then you play the game and it's not like that right this is kind of the same thing where you go, oh, my God, they actually made those games. It'll be great. And then some of those games, you actually play them and you go, oh, no, wait, this actually isn't a good game. And, and, and you know, it, it just doesn't play out as a mechanic. Um, so that's kind of what that is. Uh, Gordy and the Monster Moon. Will, you'd previously played this, right? Hell, yeah. What did you what did you think of it? Uh, I thought it was a great tight little like two hour fun little Pico 8 game with like yeah i don't know is it's getting item to unlock next area a like zelda. metroidvania oh that's that's straight zelda it's, yeah, zelda. it's straight oh, zelda like, yeah i guess that yeah. is dungeon yeah thing. yeah so i played i played probably the first hour of it i got the first three or four items and i was like this is cool it's fun um but um i think there's kind of two things going against it number one is that Zelda game has been done forever, so it's really cool for a Pico 8 game, but it doesn't really stand out in 2023 list of games. Yeah. And number two is that it's from the guy that did Frog Fractions and Frog Fractions 2 Glitter, Mint, and Grill. Is it? Yeah, and it's very upsetting that this is a normal fucking <laughs> game. It's like, yeah, buddy, yeah. You, you, you hit a home run before. Why the fuck are you bunting? You know, it's like, come on, swing for the fences again. Um, Pizza Tower. This game is wild. You guys ever played any of the Wario Land games? Yes, and I've also played Pizza Tower, and it fucks. Yeah, yeah. Pizza Tower. It's. Uh, I mean, how, how would you describe Wario Land, Chris? Uh, Wario Land is like a a frantic, uh, almost demake of the Mario formula, where it's like, as opposed to just playing by the regular. Uh, what do you call it? Mario rules of you're trying to get to the end of the level as fast as possible. It's on the right uh -huh. side of the map. It's like, we're going to subvert your expectations. You're going to you have to backtrack. You're going to have to like, unlock stuff. You're going to have to go up and down and left and right and all over the place. And also yeah. it's Wario. So there's like fart humor. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and so that's what this is. This is basically a Wario land esque. Um, yeah. This might be a better Wario land game than any Wario land. I could see that it what it does have is it has a lot of pizzazz and yes, aesthetic to charm. it. Yeah, yeah. Just like uh, it oozes with all sorts of crazy uh, art and music decisions. But the other thing that really surprised me is it has so many movement mechanics yeah. and they feel very good. And it's it's incredible. It honestly kind of reminds me of Celeste. If you remember, the great thing about Celeste was that it was just a really fucking solid platformer with a lot of cool mechanics on it. Mm -hmm. And that's what Pizza Tower is. It's got a lot of crazy stuff going on. So if you're into platformers or Warrior Land, definitely give that game a shot. Yes. And like the power ups, transformations, whatever you want to call them, are great. Yeah. Not all of them, uh, but most of them are hilarious and fun. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Super 56. This is a WarioWare type oh, game this. Uh, where you basically have a 56 different mini games that you get thrown at. Um, this is just like Pizza Tower. It has a whole lot of charm and pizzazz and aesthetics to it. Um, it's 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 just really cool. It's doing a lot of really cool different mini games. Unlike WarioWare, it's not like each mini game is guaranteed to be like five or ten seconds or less. Some of them are longer. They can be mm -hmm. a little bit weirder. And it has a really cool frame story where you're like a cultural exchange student in hell. Oh, that's cool. Uh, and so you're helping your roommates <laughs> beat this game called Super 56. Um, it's really, really cool. If you're into Warrior War games, definitely try this out. Um, Against the Storm. Uh, I, I uh, Chris is probably going to talk about this a little bit. Yeah, so, I'll, talk about, I'll talk about what you talk about. Go ahead. 
Awesome. Yeah, not going to talk about it because I'm going to talk about VTOL VR, motherfuckers. <laughs> DLC drop, baby. Woo. Oh, I, God. Literally, last time you talked about this, you talked about it for 15 minutes, and I was I hated, I hated you the most I've ever disliked you. <laughs> That's not true because I know at the end of it, you were like, that was actually a really cool story. Fuck. Um, basically, about once every year or once every two right. years, VTOL VR drops DLC, which is in the form of a new plane. And and he's been teasing it for a while. I was literally in multiplayer an hour before this DLC dropped, and nobody knew when it was going to drop. And everybody was just like, guys, I can't wait for the DLC. I can't wait for it. And everybody was like, what do you think it is? You think the plane's cool? And everybody's talking about it. Anyways, the fucking DLC. Losers. This is fucking perfect DLC, right? Because I don't know if you guys would agree with this, but I think the perfect DLC is something that not only adds new content, but also adds a substantial new mechanic and does that in a way where the mechanic doesn't just affect the DLC content. It affects the entire fucking game. Right. Is that what you can, yeah. would consider a good DLC? It depends on the kind of game. Like there are certain games. Yeah. Bloodborne has a great DLC. Alternative one of the best DLCs ever made. Um, it's just we added a, here's another 10 hours. That's incredible. It's more of the yeah. same, but it's incredible. So you're like, great. But like, yeah, ideally, I, like I want DLC that like either is its own thing and it's incredible or it fits into the game perfectly and like adds to it. Yeah. It makes me go, ah, fleshes it out. Now we're all perfect. Love it. Yeah. So the DLC in a nutshell is uh, a new two seater jet called the EF 24G. Um, it's basically the F-14 Tomcat, which was f featured in the original Top Gun movie. It's a fighter jet. It's got moving wings, so you can actually control whether the wings are forward or back for speed and agility. Ooh. Um, it's it's super fucking fast. It's the fastest jet in the game now. Like, I was pulling, like, 1.5 Mach in it, and I was like, I'm going so fucking fast, I'm going to run out of fuel in 60 seconds. Like, it's, it's fucking great. The big thing it adds, though, is electronic warfare. So what that means is in this game up to this point, you had radar, right? And if if you spotted somebody on radar, they would show up on your radar and you would be like, that's radar. I can trust radar. Right. And unless they like dropped out of range or they went behind a mountain or something like you had them on radar, you had them right. You knew where they were. You're looking at them. Right. Electronic warfare is like, hey, what if we make it so that you can have a jamming pod that lets you jam radars and lets you jam other people and you can choose to like jam enemy communication or jam their GPS or jam their ability to see missiles. Uh, but you can also use missiles to lock onto sources of jamming and you can also launch uh, decoys. So you launch a decoy, which is just a oh missile boy. that that emulates any it's of the other nine lists. Times. Yeah. <laughs> So you're basically in this fucking two seater jet with your wings swept back at 30,000 feet being like, see that radar boys fucking jam them. Right. And you're like shoving noise down their gut so they can't see All right, that thing. Boys, jam and then you're and then you're like going through your menus and you're like, all right, I'm going to launch two decoys. That's going to look like a helicopter. It's going that direction. And that's going to look like a jet and it's going to hover and it's going to go to this GPS point right over the enemy radar. Right. So you launch it and they lock onto it and they're firing missiles at it. And meanwhile, the rest of your teammates are just fucking destroying people. And you're like, Woo! And it's great because it's it's really made the game crazy because now you can't trust radar in single player or multiplayer because mm. you may be seeing a contact, but it may be a decoy. But also that contact could drop off because you're getting jammed. And it's just it's fucking incredible. VTOL I, VR I have, game of the I year. Have, I have a question. Uh, wait, I, just, I would like to acknowledge the save data raid. Thank you for raiding. Uh, yeah, oh, make a point of acknowledging it. Thank you, everyone, for you're you're for you're, ju you're just in time to hear not about VR. Um, <laughs> did, did West beat the Grinch? I do want to know. Answer me in chat. Thank you. Um, <laughs> before we get away from VTOL VR as fast as humanly possible, Mach two, preferably. Um, when you say so, everyone was so excited for the new plane. Everyone wants to new play the new plane. How like like is it like one person gets to be the new plane and everyone else gets fucked or are there suddenly the, the thing comes out and everybody is the new plane and they're all just flying around at each other. So, so they are now at, I believe six planes. So depending on what map, what map the multiplayer server decides to choose or scenario that server will then have slots and it's up to whoever created the map or that scenario to decide, you know, it's two helicopters, two planes, two jets or whatever. It, you could you could be the jet whenever you want. It really just depends on the mission. So some missions are like everybody's going to be the new jet. And some of them are like, we're going to do combined ops. So we need some jammers. We need some jets. It's like a it, it's kind of like an overwatch. Not everybody can be a tank. Right. So you okay. load into mm -hmm. the mission and the mission's like here. There's a certain number of helicopters, certain number of planes, etc. 
that's how it's basically decided. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, Ian, Ian has taken me into VR several times now, uh, showing me how to pilot, <laughs> showing me what love means. Uh, I don't Ian, trust I, Ian with a headset. I don't trust Ian putting it in your eyes. We He's only do it in the real me world. In VR. Um, <laughs> and it's been actually really fun. It's weird to like be chatting with Ian, he's like showing me stuff, and then I can just turn around and he's just behind me, like in ah, his little yeah. cockpit. And we'll like, do little uh, two seater. Yeah. yeah, it's it's a Which nightmare. reminds me, this motherfucker. So we did that. We did that probably two, three <laughs> days in a row. And then I keep just being like, hey VTOL? And he's like, no. And I'm like, VTOL? And he's like, no. You literally so we done it in a month. It, you asked me I'm, fuck you, buddy. You asked me like 20 minutes before I was leaving to go see Boy in the Heron in New York City. And then you asked me mm. again Forget what I was Piece about to shit. do. I was probably just ignoring you on that one. And then, uh, <laughs> and then the other yeah. one, you're like, you want to do it tomorrow? I was like, no, I fly to Utah. Listen, I'll do it I'll this do. week. I need to hook up the the VR set headset again because I bought uh, Derail Valley, which is the VR oh, okay. train yeah, game, gotcha. not the model train game, but the the more like yeah, VR yeah, yeah. simmy Too one. Too many trains. And, I, will uh, say. I, I really want to play that in VR. To conclude the VTOL VR segment. I have been practicing a lot the helicopter because last time we flew, <laughs> Will really enjoyed being in the gunner seat of the helicopter. And so I've been practicing flying the helicopter and I've gotten very good at the helicopter, which which is funny because VTOL VR is semi-realistic and it turns out flying helicopters is very fucking difficult because yeah. they don't want to fly. I, I <laughs> so did, I'm excited. I did master the taking off uh, without taxiing to the runway. <laughs> Who has time to taxi yeah. to a runway in a video game? Not me. Yeah, not <laughs> I'm just me. taking off. Uh, uh, anyways, uh, Chris, uh, tell me what you've been playing. Uh, first up, uh, and I know you've been playing this too. Against the Storm. Uh, Elise wouldn't shut up about this, so I went and played it because uh, it's on what do you call it? Games Pass, which means it's basically free, uh, and we love James Pass. <laughs> it's a. Uh, <laughs> You fucking sucker. Is you it on Game Pass? You oh. stupid, you stupid, dumb, idiot moron. I just noticed when the face he made, he did not know it was on Game yeah. Pass. But you know what? I really, really like this game, so I, I don't feel bad about buying yeah. it. You didn't so against, the storm, against the Storm is a, too much is a roguelite <laughs> city builder, um, yeah. which is very unique and, and cool. It's like this and uh, They Are Billions are the only two games like this, but even They Are Billions is more like set mission based. Um, and that, that one also has combat, where this one does not have combat. You don't make an army and lead it against the, the monsters. Your goal is to just build a settlement and have it survive long enough that you pass. That's the entire goal. And uh, hazards are thrown your way every X amount of time, um, and you have to deal with, like, resolve. And the whole thing is that it is a world in which there is a never-ending storm, and the storm will eventually consume. So you have to survive as long as possible before the storm consumes to be considered a victory, and then you can move on. Um, and then your goal is basically like you start at a central point and you progress a set distance out and build build a settlement. Time has to pass, rinse and repeat until you get to the end. And you have to like hit check once along the way to extend how much time you have. And eventually everything's going to get wiped. And you have to start over again if you don't do it good enough. Yeah. Uh, Are you the enjoying style, the game? I'm, I'm liking it a lot. I, yeah, I, same. when I realized there was no actual controlling of dudes, I was like, mm, okay, that's a little less exciting. I wanted to like fight monsters in the forest and shit with my little dudes while my, like to keep my town safe. But then like once I got into the loop of like it, the grand scheme of things, it's about keeping your people happy and making yeah. a town that functions. And I'm like, yes, this is what this is. This is good. Uh, the world building is actually like alarmingly good for a little roguelite. I kind of shocked by that. Um, like really cool iconography and like the way that like they handle like, oh, the humans like this kind of stuff. The dwar the, the beavers like this kind of shit. I'm like, ah, fuck yeah, that's cool. Yeah, um, skewers, skewers for the lizards. Yeah. Oh, uh, lizards, lizards are great. I'm all about the lizards. Uh, I haven't gotten the foxes yet. I heard here they're great. I got harpies recently. I um my. My number one complaint with the game, though, and I'm curious if you have the same complaint, is I I have only done one, I've played the game six or seven hours at this point, uh -huh. and that's technically only one run. 
Yeah. And it was like six, six settlements is one run. And for me, I don't like that. I almost want it to either be one run is two or three settlements or each settlement is a run. Like it just feels like a run is too. Have you have you game. unlocked any of the seals yet on the overmap? I I just did one. Yeah. Okay. I just did the first one. Yeah. So like go, going for those is like the real like where the game actually gets interesting to me is like like actively trying like I'm just gonna try to get these settlements out as fast as possible to get to a seal. And yeah. then if you know like you're not gonna really get to that seal because too far away, crank the difficulty. Get like get like make it difficult like because if you fail who cares you're not gonna make it anyway and if you succeed yeah. then you get a bunch of the resources to to spend in the overworld yeah yeah that's fair i just i just feel like for my seven hours i wish that was multiple runs instead of one run yeah mm -hmm. i think it's, other it's than that, when you hear like it. run based game you assume it's it's like oh let me get a quick run before yes, i go to work not, or quick. this is it's not like quick it's almost like the connotation of run meaning fast Yes. should, should yeah. go away but at that point just invent a new term uh yeah. for yeah. it but i, I agree well, with also a city builder like how do you make a city builder fast and like they've accomplished that in a certain way but like at the end of the day it's still oh, yeah. very difficult because settlements settlements can be fast i feel like my fastest was like 30 minutes for a settlement like you I, can just you, knock you'll get one some out. you'll get like crazy where it's like oh i got that in 12 minutes jesus christ yeah 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 it's fun um, it's, it's really good Really good. I recommend it. Art style, I think, is really charming in a simple way. It really reminds me of like playing Age of Empires 2 in my underpants when I was like 10. Hell yeah. Which is the Same. dream we're all looking for. Same. Um, next on my list, uh, also because of James Pass, uh, Hi-Fi Rush. I, you know, I played it when it came out, did the first like couple levels, went, this is nice, and then put it down. And I was like, I'm going to go beat it before, and before game of your time. God damn, this game's good. And it's just like... We should have more music games that fuck as hard as this. And it's uh, annoying that we don't. Because, like, really, what do we have besides this and the Necrodancer series? There ain't fucking much. Um, and I like this a lot more than I like Necrodancer. Probably because I have things to do that aren't to the beat. Like, I can move around and it's mm -hmm. not to the beat and shit like that. And there's actually, like, a thing to explore. And there's pretty charming character acting. Or uh, character voice acting. Um... And yeah, uh, like yeah, this, it's old news. The game's great, but yeah. Did either of you play Hi-Fi Rush? Yeah, uh, I played probably the first forty-five minutes of it, and I appreciate what it's doing. I'm just not super into rhythm games, and I there's a lot of platforming in that game, and I I yes. didn't like the platforming that much. I was I like, like the don't, platforming. I was like, don't lean into that. That's not your strong suit. Uh, so nothing against the game. Once it's you get the the little grappling hook boy, it gets better. Platform. Yeah, okay. I I've, I think I, I beat that. like the jail thing or whatever, mm -hmm. um, or that first boss. But I I think the yeah. main thing I liked about it is it was a rhythm game, but you didn't have to, you didn't necessarily have to do the rhythm stuff, or you it wasn't like would make you lose if you didn't weren't doing the yes. rhythm stuff. The, the fact and that I, it just delays your input to the next beat if you miss the beat is perfect. Yeah, so yeah. it was like like with Crypt of the Necro Dancer, you're just like every beat you miss, you're like mad You're or fucked. pissed off yeah. uh but with this it's like oh i i didn't hit it on the beat i still am hitting this guy or or doing what i need to do so i'm just not getting the bonus which is fine. yeah exactly uh someone has it's high fire pc based uh pc and xbox it's a yeah it's a uh microsoft games joint yeah uh lethal company we've all played this motherfucker this game rules <laughs> we haven't ian um, has not played it i haven't played oh it. you I haven't played, played it. it oh we gotta Stubborn play some lethal company bitch. i i need to clear the record because <laughs> i listened to both episodes that i was not on and people are under the impression that i hate this game and that's not true i have no opinion on this game when it got popular all i saw was jump scare clips and i was like i don't play scary games and that's all i heard of it and now that I'm being told it's not scary, I'm like, sure, so, okay, now I'll I, play it. I played it with a friend last night, and uh, like a couple people that had never played it before, and someone had the incredibly intelligent, my friends are not smart, uh, intelligent <laughs> observation. This isn't a scary game. This game is a thriller. Like, this game is a movie thriller. And that's kind of correct. It's a, it's a material gathering capitalist nightmare <laughs> that's also <laughs> somehow kind yeah. of a thriller um yeah. it's just so, something about the game i don't really know what it is it hits a magical point of it's simple but it's just so fun to play and it's per it's the perfect level of like your friend 
doesn't have to have played the game, and in 10 minutes, they will know what's going on enough to run around, collect loot, and have fun. Like, that's all it is. It's I, This game is not incredibly deep, but it's very fun, it's goofy, and it's cool. And that's, what all, that's all it fucking should be. Yeah, Hell we should yeah. play it on Tuesday. I should down. play it on Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. I'll play it on Tuesday. And, it's and it's Vic fucking loves it, so. Yeah, and Karen loves it. Uh, it's it's just like, um, yeah, like you said, it's just fun. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm happy. Like, I, don't, on I don't give a shit if a run falls apart because it's like it's it, you're just laughing the whole yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Like great. who cares? You lose all your stuff, you'll get it back pretty quick, anyways. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I'm excited to play it. I just I know that I don't want my first time to be by myself. So oh, I'm, yeah. I'm right oh, no, like, don't this, get me wrong. This game dies by everyone's itself. voice goes away. I'm legit terrified. Like it's scary, but it's like brief moments, <laughs> and most of it's oh, satirical. I'm not talking about being you're, scared. You're scared, just, but I'm, you're smiling and laughing. But I just know that if me trying to play the single player or with randoms, I will not get the right experience oh, to yes, properly consider yeah, this yeah, game. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You'll cry. You'll cry. Um. Thanks. Two, two more quickies. Uh, RuneScape. Um, I just bring this up because I'm about to hit 99 agility, and then I'm going to be the most handsome. Uh, wow. Also, because because Ian sent me a skill cape uh, meme the other day in the RuneScape discussion, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, I'm about to have one of those. There's a RuneScape um, discussion. Yeah, it's in the. Uh, I don't know why <laughs> no, we even just, have it in the. No, it's just, wasn't it just do. in the save data generic? It's in the save data one. Wait, no, no, you're in the save data Discord. He I sent it to I, me in the save data Discord. He added me. I did. I added them. It, okay, let me explain. What it was it was somebody? I believe it was on. It was either TikTok or Twitter, and they were TikTok like, sure. "My gift to my boyfriend this year was I made the fire making cape, the fire skill cape, and yes. it looked badass." And it I, I know badass. enough about RuneScape she, she, to be like, she picked an yeah. unfortunate fire uh, skill cape, but you know, other than that, it's cool as fuck. You know, I kind of want to play RuneScape again now. Oh, God, Thanks, it's everyone. so good. You just missed the league. Actually, it's still going on, which is great. Which is like the. <laughs> limited game mode that changes the rules a bunch it's fucking cool um last thing and i don't think either of you two care about either of these games but csgo 2 or cs2 counter-strike 2 uh, and I valorant shit. um I, shit. I so obviously counter-strike 2 came out there was a shitload of problems and everyone cried a million times um but then they fixed a lot of them uh i went ahead and played both because i have friends that play that and i play i play a lot of Valorant with my friends um i Used to, I played a lot of Counter Strike Go. I kinda can't stand Counter Strike anymore after being exposed to Valorant, and I know it's gonna make a lot of people very angry. Um, but here's the thing: after playing the game with the waifus and the abilities and the cool happy times, Counter Strike just pisses me off, and it's got a bunch of the edgiest human beings to ever touch yeah. video game. Like, you want to be called a new slur new slurs just dropped go play yeah. counter-strike <laughs> that is the angriest like valorant i've said before is the most toxic game on the internet counter-strike 2 blows that out of the water the the angriest subset of human beings are the ones actively playing counter-strike in the year of 2023 yeah i i tried to play counter-strike 2 because i i was a fan of counter-strike uh, i think i kind of dropped off after source um and i was like cool counter strike 2 let's do this and i played it for like a match or two and i was like oh it's just fucking counter strike global offensive which is yes. basically the same as sort like they just have not done enough no they've to changed up. this game and and the classic back and forth is counter strike players say valorant players can't aim so they need a abilities to make the game more fun for them my counter argument is counter strike two players are allergic to the idea of having fun while playing a video game. <laughs> so that's why they hate Valorant because there is fun and there is enjoyment to have. Why yeah. have fun while playing a video game? It's not worth it. Chris, I, I, when I can, when I can grind to get fucking silver and open 800 loot boxes. Yeah. yeah. So I, I totally, I don't want to say I agree with you because I haven't played Valorant, but going between, hey, let's play the same game that's 25 years old, but it has a new engine versus something that's actually new, I would, I would, I would go for the new. Yeah. yeah. Val's fun. It's, you know, it's a, it's a tax shooter, which means it's, it's hard and there's an absurd skill curve, but, you know, it's fun. Nice. Uh, I haven't played either of those. So yay. Yay. Uh, <clears throat> Will has been playing. Sorry. <clears throat> <clears throat> Something in my Ooh, throat. Jesus. Uh, Jesus. I've been playing uh, the Minish Cap, Legend of Zelda Minish Cap. Uh, very good game. I played a little bit of it when I was a child, a wee boy, mm -hmm. a wee laddie. 
Uh, and now I'm actually playing through it, and it's great. It's fantastic. Have you played any of the other Capcom Zeldas? Uh, is Spirit... Not Spirit Tracks. Um, Phantom yes, Hourglass. Yes, Phantom Hourglass, is. I made all the way to the final boss, and then the road... My road trip ended with my parents, and then I never played it again for some reason. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, Minish Cap, super great. Really fun. Super it great. makes me think I should... I heard myself again, and I uh, really think... I should finally play uh, A Link to the Past. I've tried like three times. You I should try um, Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons as well. Yeah, I should try those. Uh, I'm not going to do I'm not going to make the mistake of immediately after this playing any of those because I will inevitably fall off them and then hold it against right, them for yeah. years. But it, it definitely has me more open open to it. Um, the other you game play, you should do Link Between Worlds though instead of Link to the Past. Nothing against Link to the Past, but Link Between Worlds is great. Yeah, it's got a lot of quality of life stuff. It was my yeah. game of the year, whatever year it came out. Twenty four. Um, sure. Brave Fencer Musashi also super fun for the PlayStation uh, One. Uh, you are just it's for an older game. It's surprisingly not. Ter- terrifyingly difficult constantly uh the mm-hmm. first boss i think i beat in like two attempts and there were like a couple st- stages to it uh and then the only reason i put it down is because i had started minish cap and i was like let me play minish cap it's a little bit more fun uh right now but uh I- i've truly been enjoying it uh reminds me of a lunder 2 which was a fantastic playstation 1 video game i played this year and uh i'm, I'm something about that style that that polygonal style on the playstation is is juicy and delicious and i love it i just googled the next game you're gonna talk about <laughs> what the fuck am i looking at will Crosby? um boys i love idle games <laughs> they're the best <gasps> incremental idle, idle game? games are the best this game fuck. the norp epilogue i have played you can't literally, say that on twitch the, literally i think i have eight hours in it and it was all today um <laughs> it is well this came out this came out this year this is i know it tender. came out this year i am oh putting it on the game god. of the year list because it is oh my god. so much fun um, look at these fucking gnorps. you are these little norps you have these little norps there is this giant magical rock and they throw themselves painfully it points out at it oh that's to that's make it eject, they're shooting into this to thing. make it eject um z- some crystal starting with Z and then the other side of it, everyone picks them up and feeds them into this thing and you're building them up, building new buildings with that hire, building more houses to get more Norps uh, you have bombers, you have people with guns shooting it you um, you get missile silos to shoot it with missiles, uh, all this sort of stuff and then it, um, it like collapses in on itself when you uh, it like What's it? it compresses down onto itself and then you get more like three of the previous one now equal one of the like next level and then you can prestige when you earn enough points to put and every time you prestige you can put the points into your talents and unlock stuff for the next round and then uh after it like compresses and stuff you go up a tier and it's super fun it's really great i highly recommend it it's a bunch of remixes or like different instruments of classical music uh, that oh, like whips together cool. really well, um, or you can just put on like YouTube or something. Uh, the Norps are great. <laughs> we do that. We love them. Uh, they're it's uh, the writing on some of the the like tool tips for the like different powers is really funny. One of them yeah. ha- was like super long, and the last uh, dash for it was this is the longest tooltip text in the game. <laughs> it was oh, like, that's good. oh, they Jeez. should tell me. <laughs> um, and then other ones are like point out that they like brave the physical pain to hit themselves their foreheads against the yeah the, the rock the, and stuff. The sum the summary here does mention that uh, it hurt, does hurt them in order to acquire the shards of the zebelium, which is the rocks. Zebelium, um, that's what it is. But uh, the pleasure of acquiring profit is is too much to bear to not. <laughs> it it is legitimately really good. Uh, um, I yeah I've been playing it all day so. Uh, I'm putting it on the game of the year list because uh, I think it's really great. It is the Norp Apologue. That's G N O R P, and the the is in parentheses for some reason. Because uh, fuck you. I don't know what an apologue is. No clue. Or the word the. So figure that one out, folks. Uh, you can play that. Uh, the other game I've been playing is Sebel Engineering. We actually had this as a spot. Uh, wish the spotlight uh, earlier in the year. 
or it might have been last year. Uh, and it's a puzzle game where <laughs> two uh, cars are constantly firing onto a road that you need to fix. The oh, AI God, generated voice fuck. guy tells you how to like what like introduces you to the mission, fixing the road, and you are using a hammer. You have a fixed camera angle, and you're using this hammer and sledgehammer and wrench to move parts of the road up and down. They're like fixed points. And basically, you're just trying to lemmings the whole group of cars into the exit, uh, like, marker. And uh, <laughs> you me. can't move the camera around unless you click the survey thing, which is, like, those those land survey things that you always see those guys with and you have no idea how they work. And so you place it on the ground, and that lets you walk around and see it from different angles and move move things. And you are, as far as I can tell, you have budgets, and you can go over the budget, you can go under the budget. Uh, I, I I think you it counts like how many stars you get, but there's no you still pass the level even if you go way over budget, which I enjoy because uh, I'll just like hit the button a billion times like yeah. a huge ramp. Um, but if you want to, you can like really fine tune it. Uh, and at some point, it just like branches the levels branch off. So if you're having trouble with one level, you can just go to another level in a different area. Um, it kind of like does that thing where the one like puzzle trick like ramps up on one avenue of it so you can like if you're really good at launching cars into the exit you can do a bunch of those in the row um but yeah civil engineering uh also a 2023 release uh i'm not it'll probably make my list but it's not like i don't think everyone has to go out there and play that if you like those little puzzle games definitely do it but go play the norp apolog because yeah i'm probably gonna buy that list. fantastic it was like five four dollars i think it's very and the beauty just, of it is if you play multiple idle games at once, it's like you're playing games all at the same time. Yeah. I just purchased it. Good, good. I'm glad I could get it. I, and I almost told you about Works. it today and just messaged you about it, but I said he's going to buy it during local chat when I mentioned this that's an idle incremental game. This is um, I am a little upset with you, though, because I am leaving for vacation tomorrow, which means I can't play this till Monday, you piece of <laughs> shit. How fucking <laughs> dare you? <laughs> Garbage, man. I bet there has to be an app version. Well, probably not. Um, but it's great. Uh, you can, like, re- window resize it, or and, and it... it if you minimize it, it you, it turns off the sound effects and just keeps the music. But mm. you can turn off the music, and when it's min- it, there, it literally popped up with a tooltip that was like minimize this to save GPU, uh, and it'll just run in the background. Uh, the tooltips are funny oh, too. Yeah. <laughs> I had a tooltip that popped up. It just said, "Just keep going," and I was like, "Thanks." <laughs> <laughs> I just clicked OK. You can it. do it. You can do it. Uh, yeah. Uh, great game. Okay, time. Are we going to have time for the news here? Time for the news times? News times? I mean, honestly, unless there's something in here. Well, actually, I will talk about one thing because I don't know if you guys have seen it. Have you seen the hackless ROM cart that has been announced for the Nintendo Switch? No. No. You guys have. This is a company. Um, uh, there's not a whole lot of information about them, but they basically said, hey, we have a ROM cart. So a ROM cart is basically a cartridge with an SD card in it that you can then load with multiple games. And they said, we have a ROM cart. And then they showed a video of it working. And there are people who have touched it. And they said, yeah, there is a ROM cart coming out for the Nintendo Switch. And it works on vanilla unmodded consoles. Um, There's a little bit of wonkiness with it. So basically, it doesn't run off of Nintendo Switch roms necessarily it runs off of some sort of proprietary backup and the only way to get that backup is to have a modded switch but i i don't know something tells me the internet's going to be flooded with this proprietary rom format pretty quickly this video Um, attached to the article you sent is the shittiest video mankind has ever put on to the internet is it is i is the one with the white gloves and he's adapting yes. the cartridge so that's the other thing the weird thing in order to change games on the on the rom cart you eject it so if you have two games on the on the cart you put the cart in the first game loads you eject it and put the cart back in and the second game loads so they've talked about maybe doing a new version where there's a switch there's like a button on the cart itself so you don't have to eject it so much that'd be but smart yeah this is fucking wild. It's a fucking ROM cart for a current generation console. Yeah, that's that's wild. Uh, it's crazy. We've never seen modding of an act like an active console quite like the Switch. Maybe the 3DS, Definitely but like, yeah, especially never, to the extent that 
so the first time I really heard about it, and I'm sure it happened before that, was with Metroid Dread, where there were pirated copies of Metroid Dread that were leaked before Dread came out, and people were playing that game on PC and on modded Switches before that game was actually released, like a week or two early. Mm -hmm. And that's just been the case ever since then. It happened with Tears of the Kingdom as well. Like, that, that console is completely compromised. That being said, I guarantee you it's not hurting their sales at all. So it's oh, wild. No. Yeah, it's wild Mi to see Miyamoto's it. crying on his fucking bed made of gold. Like, who cares? <laughs> yeah. Like, he like he gets furious about emulation, but, like, it has not hurt Nintendo the tiniest amount. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's just it's just crazy to see um, the... I mean, we were just talking about piracy at the beginning of this with the uh, Miu Mini Plus, etc. But piracy? the... What? That's my I, I got my games on it. I haven't committed I, any crimes. Today. I I did. Okay, look, I I will say this. In playing Gordy and the Monster Moon, it's a Pico 8 game, right? Pico 8 is not free. There's a $15 license fee to get to license fee to get Pico license 8. Fleet? From Red Hot Chili license Peppers? fleet. And I tried for two hours to find an, a working pirated copy of Pico 8, and then finally I was like, fuck it, and I paid $15 for a legitimate license for Pico 8. So you can play real games on this and, and pay money for those games. Wait, what? My Mi Mini just plays Pico 8 games. It's probably because it comes with a pirated license for Pico 8. Pro I mean, it's part of the... Oh, maybe, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Whereas mine, mine did not. It came with all the other emulators, but Pico 8's a little different where you actually have a license. You need to have a license just to run the engine itself, as opposed to emulators where the emulator's free and it's the ROM you have to pay for. Gotcha. That's weird. I don't like that. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's other stuff on here. Do you guys care about any of this worth talking about? Fuck you, no. Bobby Kotick, you stupid piece of shit. Yeah. But also, Fuck he's you. getting paid a bajillion dollars. So yeah. Who cares? It's going to be nine figures minimum that he's going to get as a parachute. Yep. Oh, yeah. I love a hey, kids, if you're, if you're ever writing a contract for your company, make sure you put in it that if you fire me for any reason, I get paid millions of dollars. I don't know how he got away with that, but God, that's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> that's like it's unfortunately that's standard C-suite bullshit. It's fucking wild. It's crazy. Um. Yeah, um, I, 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 did you guys see this news out of China? This was pretty bonkers as well, beginning China. of the week. Yes, I was reading the Wall Street Journal, and I saw this news out of China. Um, it was all over. Oh, Twitter actually, I actually did Monday. see this, yes. Yeah, so China has always been rather restrictive around video games. They've announced uh, new rules to reduce spending in video games. Uh, let me see. Online. This is from Reuters. Quote, online games will now be banned from giving players rewards if they log in every day, if they Love spend that. money on the game for the first time, or if they spend several times on the game consecutively. So basically, uh, they are literally making it illegal in China for your game to have some of these monetization incentives that are just commonplace in games now. I never thought I would say this, but holy shit, China and the Communist Party are leading the way in purging games of bad microtransaction bullshit awesome. that, should, that should be illegal. Like, this shit should not be allowed. It's bad. Did you see, the, the, I don't see it mentioned here, but the, like, Reuters is kind of like, their font makes my eyes bleed. Um one of them said one of the articles that mentioned this said also if you are like, if you are a loot box based system which are already you know scrapped way the fuck down in uh, China and Oceania in general yeah um at a at, at some point uh you will be charged so much for selling the loot boxes that you will be losing money because <laughs> so what happens is you're fined based on loot boxes bought on an account right like on an yeah. individual person's account and it scales up the fine so after it's like after like a thousand loot boxes or some shit you will owe the chinese government money for selling a loot box yeah it's yeah. awesome it's, it's amazing um this, yeah, so this was huge news. China's a huge market. There's going to be a yeah. shitload of games impacted by this. Yep. Um, let me just grab it real quick. I uh, ten cent, ten cent stock stumbled by as much as sixteen percent after the news. Um, or I'm sorry, as much as twenty five percent at one point. Their stock dropped because of this news. Because that's ten cent gaming company. A lot of mobile. A lot of microtransactions. So. 
this is big stuff. But, you know, we saw with the EU doing it earlier. Now China's doing it. Maybe we just all need to do it to get this shit out of gaming. Eh, it'll uh, happen eventually. Yeah, I, I think it's it's interesting. Like, it's the right course to do it. But uh, yeah, I hope I hope it can happen more outside of China. Uh, I was it's, also... Um, it's like just real quick it's like the the esrb ratings in the 90s i don't know if you know the story behind that but basically uh tipper gore got real pissed off at violent mm-hmm. video games and congress and the senate started like having committee hearings and basically the the argument was we as the government will step in if you as the industry esa do not do something about this first and that basically twisted the arm of the esa to eventually create the ESRB rating system and create that whole system so the government did not have to step in. And I think that's what needs to happen here is we need some pressure from the U.S. government to prevent these predatory monetization policies, particularly aimed at children, and force the industry to adopt standards and ratings and recommendations as opposed to the government having to actually doing it. Yeah. Um, how does that... Does, how, not to get on a long tangent about the ESRB, but how does that... That only apply like how does that not apply to like indie games and stuff like that? Is it only to publishers? It's it's a lot of retailers that um that are partnered with the SRB system. So for example, the big thing about hot coffee and GTA San Andreas was not that it was adults only. It was that if it was adults only, then Walmart wouldn't carry it, Best Buy wouldn't carry right, it, yeah. Target wouldn't carry it, etc. So mm-hmm. that's the big thing. It kind it's of very, it's very similar to movie distribution where like most move most movie theaters don't have the correct permits and shit to play NC-17 movies because you have to like get yeah. like extra additional like, gotcha. clearances and shit like that. So like and has to be like your security has to be good enough that like kids can't wander in and shit like that, which uh, Russ Meyer uh, edited a movie and it was going to be released as NC-17 and he was so excited because he could have put uh, cut and put more boobies in. So he did that <laughs> and they, they resubmitted it to uh, the, the, the ratings team and then it got an R. <laughs> oh my god so he was like i win That's wild. <laughs> that That's um wild. so i guess in that case like among us probably got had to get rated by the esrb before they could sell like those to codes xbox and stuff in oh, yeah okay. yeah probably. i never thought about the retail thing that that makes way more sense um i also want to point out that the um 10 cent PUBG is called Game for Peace, which is a wild title what? for this video. It's share in the image share there. your bullets. I have share I, your bullets. Game for Peace. I have no comment on Tencent for for job reasons, but what? <laughs> game for Peace. Yeah. Game for yeah, Peace. We're fighting to kill everyone so we could have peace. That 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 does make sense. Think think about it, Will. Think, think sense about, about it. it. Yeah. No matter which way. Um, okay, so moving on from the news to the wishlist spotlight section. This is the section where we spotlight wishlisted games on Steam. Uh, this game is called We Kill Monsters. Um, I have been following this game for quite a while. It was, I forget, someone posted it on um, on Twitter, or I think I followed the guy on Twitter, and it just looked like this weird... I remember like these dev videos of like this backpack on the back of the character and like the guy was adding like lanterns to it and stuff and it very mm-hmm. much looked like out oh, that's outlast this and some other stuff. Uh it did finally get it got picked up by Annapurna for uh for a publisher, like I think last month. Uh and then I noticed it again. It uh it's a solar co op adventure set in a mysterious and massive pit. You are a husk of Edenu homunculi created to explore the depths and hunt angels uh it just looks really fun and pretty and walk i you know honestly i thought the coolest thing was the backpack it's just like i love this big beefy yeah. backpack on the person's back and just walking through uh and descending into a pit and uh co-op also appeals to me nowadays yeah. um it seems to have gotten a little more inspiration from elden ring since that came out uh Two-ish years ago. Oh my gosh. I, I think we're entering a killing big monsters renaissance in games. Mm. Uh, partially inspired by a mix of Monster Hunter and Souls ripoffs. Um and I'm I'm all for it. I want to fight I want to fight big monsters with my friends. That's what video games is about in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. Uh it just looks like fun. So that's We Kill Monsters. Go wish listed on Steam. Uh I think it's gonna be a, a fun game to play. Uh like I said, especially co-op. 
I love these games when they're co-op, and you can, like Chris said, smush monsters with your friends. Uh, it's always a good time. That is the Wishlist Spotlight. Thank you. Uh, I'll be taking your questions uh, via email. You can email me at biden at whitehouse.gov. <laughs> um, big Joe at whitehouse.biz. Yeah, big, big, big Joey. Um, anything else from anyone? Uh, what, what do we got? <laughs> what do we got? Hi. Yeah. Joey. Yeah. Hi, I'm not- Ian Gibson. You can catch me with Jehovah's Witnesses at my house. Tune in uh, Tuesday. We're going to be playing some Lethal Company. Uh, yeah, I, I guess we're, we're. Are we doing anything this week? We're not doing anything this weekend because it's New Year's. Yeah, I guess not. I'm, I'm out of town, so it's up to you. Oh guys. yeah, Ian's out of town, and I'm busy playing board games with Chris. So uh, yeah, we'll see you Tuesday with some Lethal Company. It'll be a good time. Uh, let me hit the outro, uh, folks. Thank you so much, uh, Chris. People can find you where. YouTube.com slash save data team. You know where to find me. Yay. I was your host, Will Crosby. You can find me on Twitter at Hunt270. You can find Ian Gibson on Twitter at Think Gibson. You can find all of our content, subpixelfilms.com. We'll bring you straight to uh, to our website. And then you can go to the link tree and do all the thing and buy merch and stuff. Uh, this has been your weather report from the New York region. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. That is uh, accurate weather for an accurate purpose. Uh, we'll be back on Tuesday, like That's we said, cool for some luck. lethal company. It's going to be a uh, fun time with that. Maybe we'll get like 50 people to play with us. Uh, it'll be super fun. Uh, and then uh, that's it. It'll be New Year 2024. Wild things. Hope everyone has a good New Year. And we will see you all next week. Bye-bye. Goodbye.